What is up, blockchain gang? Welcome back to part two, where I rapidly review another 15 play to earn titles. If you haven't seen part one, I would suggest you watch it first because I'm not going to do one of those previously on montages. However, in the last episode, I did confuse Sweatcoin with the coin app. So I will start off by writing that wrong before we move on by knocking this crap down to the F tier. While it was nice that there are 120 million users don't need to purchase an NFT to move and earn, I want you to pay close close attention to how stupid the tokenomics are. Only 7% of the tokens are set aside for the entire play to earn user base. That is like inviting all of your friends over for pie, cutting the pie into 14 equal pieces and making all 120 million of your guests share a single slice. When you see that shit, you better move, as in away from this project, <coughs> alluvium. When you ask what the fuck is up with the rest of the pie, they tell you things such as That slice is for people who brought pie to the last party and staked it. And that slice is for influencers who pretend to use our app when we give them pie. And those three slices are for friend referrals because every pyramid needs a strong base. Did I say pyramid? Oops. I, of course I mean pie. If that wasn't the biggest red flag, there are currently 22 billion tokens with an uncapped total supply. Who cares if they burn 4 million or 2 billion or 20 billion when they still have far more than any project needs? Needs. To put it into perspective, there are less than 22 billion ones, fives, tens, and $20 US bills combined in circulation around the world. And most of them are worth far more than a dollar, obviously. Moving on, but not to earn. Remember, this content is sponsored by viewers like you. I mean, YouTube. Seriously, YouTube gives me seven cents every time you like a video, which isn't enough for me to buy a Draco, so do whatever you want. Magic Craft has a volume of 400 $170,000 and features a PvP MOBA inspired by the art of games like Warcraft. Using the MCRT token on the Binance Smart Chain, it can also be used on other chains as well. The beta is locked to players who buy one of 10,000 Genesis NFTs, which is about $240, or you can stake 100,000 tokens, which would be about $355, which really tickles my sus bone. It was a million tokens four months ago, so I would assume it would lower even more over time as there are still 5,800 NFTs left for sale. This is definitely my kind of genre, but these kind of games need to be very tight in their movement, abilities, and netcode to be considered competitive, which seems to be impossible for most development teams. I would put it down into the B row, but it gets dropped to C until it's open for everyone to experience and not just people who will be biased by the hundreds of dollars at stake if other people don't like the gameplay. If you would like to see more about this game in the meantime, you'll probably have to find another channel who plays it. Or buy me an NFT and we'll go half seas on the profits because I'm one of those try before you buy kind of guys. Just a quick update to let everybody know, currently the NFT marketplace isn't working for some reason, but there were NFTs listed for 40 to $60. So it seems like after paying $240 to get an NFT, people are willing to bail on this game unless they're transferring it to another account or something like that. Just wanted to throw that in there. Arsenal 3D FPS is a first person shooter on the Binance Smart Chain with a daily trading volume of $450,000 in wealth tokens. This is a very basic FPS with limited game modes, janky movement, and a very fast time to kill, which helps if you're just grinding tokens. They also have official and unofficial tokens tournaments, but I couldn't stand to play the game for more than three days to get that deep into it. I would put it in the C category because it does have a large economy and the genre is definitely underrepresented at this time, but it feels too underpolished to be considered in a playable state. SXBet is one of the largest sports betting apps in the crypto space with a daily trading volume of $450,000 using the SX token. While I would never use an app such as this one, I hate when game shoehorn and gambling systems such as in Dark Eden, Black Squad, and Champion Strike. I see why it would be appealing to some who like to watch sports
airports, but it's illegal to use the site from the US and many other countries without the aid of a VPN. I will just stick this in the C and remind everyone to call 1-800-BETS-OFF if you or a loved one suffer from a gambling addiction. Nine Chronicles is an idle RPG that allows players to opt in to using their computer's resources to mine wrapped Nine Chronicles gold to use in game or sell on the market. Items and experience are used to power up players and their mining rates or items can be sold to other users with the token having a trading value of $375,000. The system uses an energy system, but players are encouraged to stake tokens in order to acquire more energy as a cheaper option than buying it outright, as well as time skips to reduce crafting time. With sound tokenomics and basic gameplay, the game doesn't do anything too special, but it does what it's supposed to do and it does it well. I would put this in the A category as a great decentralized game, but they're even open source and developers encourage mods to help improve or make variations to the game, which bumps it up to our second entry in the S rank. Up next is another simulation game called Townstar on the Gala Games Network. Gala? Gala? Gala Games? Created by the co-founder of Zynga, who made Farmville and many other social simulation games. Townstar uses the town token with a trading volume of $300,000, or at least it did until earlier this year when it switched to using the parent token instead of Gala. Gala? Gala? And removed all free to play to earn options. I also find it odd that they have co-founder of Zynga, creator of Farmville plastered all over their website when Mark Skaggs just recently joined the team a few months ago and the game has been out for over a year. That would be like Pepsi claiming Michael Jackson created their soda because he did a commercial with them. And isn't bragging about creating Farmville just another way of saying that you've had zero successful projects in the past 10 years? I'm sorry for getting so salty, but there's a limit to how much marketing and PR bullshit I can tolerate from D-bag developers like these. Townstar gets the D, and that is just because it can't be in the same tier as Lucky Farmer. Let me know if you disagree, and I will mathematically prove to you how they are D-bags. Tap Fantasy is a tapping minigame RPG featuring some thick TNA as you work your way to become the sluttiest miner in Odom. Trading over $300,000 daily for taps on the Solana or Binance chains, players earn multiple trading currencies in-game by tapping on things better than 99.9% .9 of other players. Outside of playing and trading, players can also earn by creating mini games of their own for players to take down. NFTs come in the form of character skins and can be upgraded with MC, another token for the game for additional abilities and stats. I really hate that the target audience for this game is either horny teenage boys or an elderly gentleman who has had a stroke and can only use the right side of his body. That is enough to downgrade it from a B to a C. DeFi Kingdoms is trading at $200,000 per day using the Jewel token. It seems like there are multiple servers that use different tokens and blockchains such as Crystal and Jade. I read the website, white paper, two articles, a few patch notes, eight user reviews and watched four videos about it and I still have no idea what in the fuck is going on with this incognito dragon quest. So don't expect to find any answers here unfortunately. All of the videos are only talking about tokens and gardens and they show zero gameplay unless the gameplay is just submenu after submenu of overly designed UI. This goes in the F category with the rest of the crypto wallets posing as video games. Spider Tanks is another member of the Gala Games and continues to struggle with their tokenomics while trading at a volume of $200,000 in silk. This MOBA has players buying NFT tanks or parts to tanks to upgrade them to take out the opposing team. While I enjoy the time I played in the game, the tokenomics are a convoluted mess to sell nodes and upgrades. Furthermore, or all of Gaily games are kind of going to hell in a handbasket as they pivot to mobile gaming with microtransactions for fiat in addition to requiring an upfront purchase to earn. Talk about one step forward and two steps back. At least the game only takes $10 to play now with an NFT tank instead of $400 six months ago. I would put this one in the A for gameplay but knock it down to C due to how it has been handled. I won't go into detail because it would take an entire video to cover all the shenanigans they have pulled over there. Wink, wink. Satan Arena has a trading 
volume of $160,000, counting both the THG and THC tokens on the Binance Smart Chain. This is a MOBA inspired by Brawl Stars that is free to play and requires the purchase or rental of NFT characters to play and earn. And these NFTs must have earnable battles left, which is limited, and once they are depleted, can never earn again. Technically, you can grind quests or open the welcome pack and get an NFT, but you'll still have to pay the gas fees, which was about 78 cents last I checked. So essentially your NFTs are like milk, and once it expires, it doesn't matter if the milk wins or loses, it won't earn any more because it's spoiled. The only way I can get behind a system like this is if you earn the same amount every match, win or lose, but your earnable gains only decreased when you lost a match. Also, winning matches when you can't earn should restore the amount by one, so they're not just digital trash when you run out of battles because you can charge them back up. This is yet another B game knocked down to row C due to bad design choices. Splinterlands is an auto battle TCG with a daily volume of $155,000 using Splinter Shards and Hive, a variety of networks with the Hive wallet. While it is free to play, you will need to spend $10 for a summoner spellbook in order to earn from winning matches, joining guilds, or tournaments. This will also start you off with some credits to buy a starter deck. Dark Energy Crystals were the original token but were replaced by SPS which also work for staking and governance. They recently announced a restrictive energy system to replace the previous capture rate system that lowered earnings after each win after the first of the day progressively. It seems like this was to combat bots and burn DEC when real players need to buy more energy. They are also selling land to acquire a new type of card called spells. Nothing against this game, but I like the art in Gods Unchained more, and the auto battle feature also destroys my ability to believe in the heart of the cards. In top deck, the only thing that can save me when all hope is gone. Okay, Boomer. Geno Pets is our final move to earn app on the list, which trades at $150,000 in Gene and Kai tokens on the Solana framework. This is free to play, giving you a Geno Pet when you start the game, which can be leveled up and made into an NFT. When you walk with your phone, you accumulate energy, which is then used to battle, power up, and evolve your Geno Pet Pokemon style, which in turn will yield more energy with each step. The catch is that to earn with this app, you will have to buy a habitat for your Geno Pet, which start at $200. This was an A in my book until they released the habitat changes, which took it down to a C by putting half of the game behind a large paywall since there are less than 6,000 total habitats. Crazy Defense Heroes is a tower defense game converted to play to earn. The gameplay was fun at first, but once I began to unlock advanced towers, it became very easy and boring since the challenge was gone. It uses the tower token on the Polygon network, trading at $134,000 each day. When I played the game, I was never able to earn due to how they changed how tower was claimed to charge a gas fee. They distributed Matic to all players to cover the fee, but claiming would still never work for me. I would assume they have it all worked out now without checking because I'm lazy. Get over it and get into the B category for balance issues. Battle Infinity uses the iBat token with the trading volume of $130,000 on the Binance Smart Chain. It seems like one of those projects that started small, with a focus on building a fantasy sports team and competing against other players from around the world to raise the stakes of your favorite spectator sports. However, like with most blockchain projects, they wanted to start a metaverse, a bunch of low effort games, staking, DeFi, and all the other bells and whistles. The tokenomics are modeled after a casino instead of a play to earn experience, and that is rewarded with an F on this channel. Forest Knight is a turn based mobile strategy game that has a volume of $100,000 in Knight tokens on the Polygon mainnet. Your characters move across a plants first zombie style board to defeat the enemies in PvE and PvP. I don't have a ton of great things to say about this project, but I can't really say much to the bad either. I will say that it uses an NFT burning system to get better NFTs and I hate that. The purpose of an NFT is that it's supposed to be non-fungible. That literally means irreplaceable. And if you expect people to burn the things they earned in order for your economy to function properly, you don't belong in this space. I'm sorry, but if the cap fits you, wear it. And if it fits your friend too, share it. I know it's not my role of a parent to take the confidence of a child and tear it. Just grade it already. Fine, it's a D. Mirror 4 is the MMORPG on mobile and PC using the Draco and Hydra tokens which are trading at about $40,000 in daily volume on the WeMix blockchain. This is by far the best looking game on this list if graphical fidelity is important to you. It is free to play and earn, but earning has been greatly delayed to combat bots and diminished over time. This was my first experience with a play to earn game and I didn't know what a play to earn game was when I started playing it for a video review and became hooked on it and still play it 8 
18 months later. You'll have to check out one of the hundreds of videos I made on the game for more info than that, and I will put this in the S rank as well. I don't know what else to say, but most blockchain games feel like you're playing a blockchain game. While you don't even notice it 99% of the time in the background of the best ones. While making this list over the past week, I became a tad bit obsessed and consumed with doing the research on each project and it has made me come to the conclusion that I am far too late. The time to expose these corrupted projects is before everyone has lost all of their money on them, and not afterwards. So in addition to providing guides and entertainment on blockchain games I actively enjoy, I'll be devoting a portion of my time on YouTube to exposing fake games who are shilling their tokens and NFTs to unsuspecting players and investors. The thing you need to understand, especially if you are coming from the investment world, is that the vast majority of games fail, at least 95% by my estimates. Most are cancelled before they are ever even announced, due to a lack of funding, staff, popularity, or technology. Even if the game is announced, and it finally launches after many delays, and if they work out all of the bugs, and if it has good security, and if it is fun, and if it has a player base, and if it isn't overshadowed by the release of a more popular game launch, only then can they be considered successful. And that success doesn't always persist for a meaningful amount of time. This means that you would have to invest into 20 games before they are released that are not outright scams on average before you finally find one that is successful. Then you would need to have an ROI of at least 2000% on that one game just to break even on all the money you lost from the other 19 failures. I know there are examples out there of people who made a killing without scamming people, but they were incredibly lucky in my opinion, and there are probably a hundred examples of people losing their ass on a pipe dream for each one of them. In addition to this, I'll also be featuring some of my own games I have developed or am currently working on. I'm not trying to get you to play them or buy a coin, but hopefully show off my designs and get a job somewhere on a cool project or something. That is my list. I will leave a list to this template in the description if you want to make your own ranking. What do you think? Did you remember to like and subscribe so we can do this again sometime?